Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for today's video. I thought it would be cool if I hopped on here and just shared with you guys my testimony, my spiritual journey, my walk with the Lord, whatever you want to call it. Um, and just be a little bit vulnerable, honestly, and just openly share. I know for sure I've never shared my testimony at, um, on YouTube or just openly in public to a lot of people. Um, I've definitely shared it in one-on-one -on -one conversations and, you know, smaller type groups, but never just openly on the internet or, like I said, in a large setting. So, yeah, I thought it would be a good idea to just hop on here and share this with you guys, allow you to get to know me a little bit better, and just hear my story you know if i can encourage anyone that watches this that's my goal um if i could just be transparent and help someone in the process that's what i really want to do so anyways i hope that you guys enjoy this video if you do and you want more content like this then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and yeah without further ado let's just jump on into the video So I'll start out by saying that first and foremost, this is coming from my perspective. These are my opinions. These are my um, experiences. And so you do not have to believe the way that I believe. Like that is absolutely okay. Um, I encourage you to think through what you believe um, and to believe in something. However, you do not need to believe what I believe. So yeah, that said, I'll just go ahead and start by saying, you know, I grew up in a... Um, I grew up going to a small Southern Baptist church. Um, I'm from a super small town, and there was only a few churches that I knew of whenever I was growing up, and one of them happened to be, like I said, a Southern Baptist church. Um, they're still up and running today. I haven't been back to see them anytime soon or anytime recently, but yeah. So I remember being in, you know, first grade, second grade, going to this church and being in junior choir, being in plays and in youth and all of these things. Um, and uh, my, my grandmother went, my grandmother's sister went, my mom went. Um, I don't remember, I don't really think that my grandpa ever went, but I know my dad did not. And so really it was just me, my brother, and then my mom, my mom's mom and her sister. So just a few of us going, and that's what I remember starting out, you know, going on a consistent weekly basis, um, sitting in the pews, really not understanding anything, to be honest with you, not really paying attention, eating candy and um, drawing on, you know, little um, programs and obviously going to, you know, children's church in the morning, you know, Bible school and all that kind of stuff. Um, church was fun for me. Like I really have always enjoyed worshiping. And I remember being little and like wanting to be a singer when I grew up. So um, any opportunity, any excuse for me to get to actually sing was um, always good for me. So I think that's why I really loved um, our junior choir was because I got to exercise that muscle, if you will. And so, yeah, I grew up, you know, all throughout elementary school being in junior choir. I remember um, being in school and having all my friends that were in junior choir with me. After um, school, we would get on a, a church van and we would go to the church and have, you know, junior choir practice and we would go on field trips and go take trips and all these things. And it was so fun. Um, I had a great time in that phase of my life however i know for a fact i wasn't pursuing a relationship with the lord i got saved on my parents 20th anniversary i remember sitting in um sitting in church on a sunday and just feeling like super hot in my seat like really actually listening to what the um, preacher was saying and he had he you know had an altar call and said if you want to to dedicate your life to the Lord, then you can say this prayer. And so I said the prayer and then that led to him saying, hey, like if you said that prayer, I want you to come forward. I want you to stand in front of this church and share with people that you are dedicating your life to Jesus. And so I um, had my mom go up with me, I remember. Um, and I remember being extremely terrified because I was so young. Like I was not okay with feeling like everyone was looking at me everyone was acknowledging the fact that i just said that prayer and one i think i was terrified with people knowing that i wasn't saved before that moment and yeah it was just really scary honestly and i i remember 
after that, you know, going to, um, you know, different concerts, winter jam, things like that. And them like praying out loud and, and saying, if you don't know Jesus, like pray this prayer and you will be saved. And I was just so conflicted. Like I was internally internally confused because I, I was like, what, like, why did I have to go stand in front of the church to, to prove that I was saved, right? Like, how can I just pray a prayer in the stands of this massive Colosseum and that was enough. And so for the longest time, I remember just being thoroughly confused, like not knowing if I actually was saved or if I wasn't, but I knew that I like went to church. It was just difficult, really not understanding and not feeling like I was being educated at all or had a good example or if someone like walking me through what the gospel actually is. And yeah, so that's all I really remember from my childhood was just, just being being at the church, whether it be like lock-ins or um, plays that we were putting on or junior choir practice or things like that, or maybe even like lunches after the church service and things like that. But I never recall me pursuing God's heart. Like outside of a one, I did that too and would memorize Bible verses and memorize books of the Bible, but I never knew what it actually meant to have a real relationship with my creator. That led to me going to middle school and continuing down that path, not really pursuing that, slowly becoming more and more and more disinterested. And, you know, I think I always knew God was there, but I sort of kind of just put him on the back burner. So that led to me being in high school and getting in a relationship with um, someone who was also a Christian, right? And also um, grew up in a similar background in terms of like was at church um, with his family, but I didn't actively see him pursuing that relationship either, so I thought it was normal and totally okay. And so, um, got in that relationship, ended up, you know, finding myself in sexual sin and not really recognizing what I actually was doing, like not really realizing that, oh my gosh, like what I was doing was actually um, furthering my relationship with God. I was just doing what everyone else was doing, right? So I had just no idea. Truthfully, that just led me to feel um, empty inside and not completely right like I I think I have always just known I, I've known that God exists but I haven't actually known that intimacy with him high school goes by I'm still with that same person living in sexual sin which slowly led to me smoking weed a lot with him and um just not living like I needed to be living, like doing things that I know I knew deep down that I shouldn't be doing, but I was doing anyways because the um, society of they were also doing those things. And so I just thought it was acceptable and it was okay. And I was in high school, we had like FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and they also had worshiping. And I had always just felt so connected with God whenever I would be worshiping and singing because I just thoroughly enjoyed it so much. But also I just felt like that was where my connection was because I wasn't pursuing any other, you know, t tangible type relationship with God um, and getting in the word or having like devotional time with myself and praying to him. Like, no, like that time was, my time with him was when I was worshiping. And I just felt so connected to him in those moments. But then it's like, after I left those environments, I just went back doing my normal thing, right? That transitioned into college where um, I was still dating the same person. And, um, you know, we were still doing the same thing that we were doing and we were going to church and we looked like we were doing things right on the outside, right? Like we seemed as if like we were actually like living right, but we weren't. We were living this fake facade of a life and um, acting like we were behaving, I guess you could say, or acting like we were being righteous, but in reality we were living in sin and furthering ourselves from him. It just wasn't good. Like it was slowly but surely chipping away at my self-image. It led to, you know, us ending our relationship and then me going in this phase where I just was very promiscuous. I was honestly just numbing myself because I was so lost and I was so broken and um, I just I knew I wanted more. I knew I wanted to be a better version of myself. I just didn't even know where to start because I had no like good example in my life that was going to like reach into me and like pull out the best version of myself. And so I just didn't have good association. Although I wasn't a hellion and I wasn't doing, you know, terrible things all the time. Like I just wasn't, my life was not on the right track. I could totally tell. And so I was in a phase where I was just doing whatever made me feel good in the moment. And um, then a few months later, I ended up reconnecting with Dalton, which for those of you who don't know, that's my husband. 
Um, my now husband and we've been married for almost three years now, which is wild to think about. Like it has literally flown by, but yeah, so we reconnected and um, we both were <laughs> very similar in the sense that we both were very lost. We were both very broken. We both had a lot of baggage that we needed to work through individually and together because whenever we started that relationship a lot of it started to be exposed and revealed to us that we we had issues right like we had some deep issues that were rooted from environments that we, we came from right and that we needed to work through but we weren't we weren't working through them we were just numbing them almost like i just transitioned from one bad relationship into um a better relationship but was still implementing the same patterns and it just was not good and you know i'm I'm just truly thankful because I remember thinking through and praying to God, like, you know, I want my future husband, I want my future relationship to be um, rooted in the Lord. Like, I want our marriage, whatever, whoever I get married to, like, I want my husband to be the leader of the household and actually, like, pursue God. And, yeah, I just, I knew that I wanted that type of marriage and that type of relationship, but I, but I wasn't doing um, the things necessary to yield that fruit, right? Yeah, we ended up getting engaged in August that year. And to be honest with you, Dalton was an atheist at the time. And I knew that. And I knew that I wasn't supposed to be marrying someone who was unequally yoked, right? Um, and it was a struggle. And I was just, in my heart, like, I knew that that wasn't okay. And I just was praying. I remember praying so hard that um, his heart would change and that he would start to see um, God's love through me in some way. And um, because I I knew that, like, I think that I wanted to change him. I wanted to change him so bad, but I knew that at the end of the day, like, I couldn't change him. God had to change his heart and, and help him become more open to receive him, right? A few months later, he ended up meeting a man that really he just saw a lot of success in his life. But what so attracted to him was the peace that this man had and the peace that this couple had and he just was so curious and intrigued by it after growing somewhat of a relationship with this man you know dalton started to ask questions and take interest and turns out god was at the center of their marriage and so he saw that and this man actually led dalton to christ literally like right before this i feel as if i was at my rock bottom like I wanted something different. Like I knew that there was a better way to live and I just wanted something different so bad. And so whenever I saw this man reach into Dalton and start pulling the greatness out of him and um, the seeds of greatness that I knew that he had planted in him, I, I say this, he, he was my diamond in the rough. And, you know, I just started to see the light bulb go off in his eyes, in Dalton's eyes. Like he actually saw God for the first time and I it was the most beautiful thing for me to see because here I am, you know, I had been raised, if you will, in the church and had seen God firsthand. I had put him on the back burner of my life for so long and just selfishly lived however I wanted to live. And God was there the entire time and I took him for granted. I totally took him for granted. I knew that at that moment I could not keep doing what I was doing. I had to start pursuing God. I was just rocked, like just, it was the most beautiful thing. I, I, I'm i speechless when I think about it because it was just incredible. And I knew that every prayer that I prayed to God about my future husband and what I wanted my life to look like was slowly being, was slowly coming true, but it was absolutely coming true. And I was just in awe. That really started my journey and just learning more about who Jesus is and, and, and the grace that he has and the love that he has for me as his child. And my life is so different than it was just a short four four years ago. Um, and here we are almost three years into our marriage and no, things are not perfect, right? Like we have conflict where we're, we're working through a problem and we're against each other sometimes, but the goal is not perfection. It has always been for us progression. And you know, we are not, we do not have the perfect relationship. Like I am honestly just in disbelief most times of how good my life actually is because of God just coming into our lives and changing our hearts and helping us really just see who he is and become more like him every single day. Like that relationship that we've been pursuing with him has just made all the difference. It has drastically changed our lives. It's drastically altered our trajectory. It's just been really cool for me to see things come full circle and it's 
seriously the most beautiful thing and I'm just so encouraged and so excited to help other people see God like I see him now you know I'll say like over the past couple of years like with all the craziness in the culture just having that relationship with God has allowed me to have so much more peace and so much more wisdom and discernment and you know what's going on in my life my day-to-day -day, and how we live our lives and I will say again and I'll, I'll continually say it that we are not perfect and we fall short every single day it's insane how imperfect that we are however God's grace covers us all he loves us and that love is just indescribable I cannot explain it to you it is the most amazing the most amazing thing and so I'm just forever thankful that we are and have been cultivating that relationship with our creator and um, it's just dramatically changed our lives I can't even begin to tell you anyways that's my testimony it wasn't really uncomfortable to be vulnerable but it's like sometimes I don't even know what words to say so I hope that you enjoyed the video and if you're struggling with anything or you need prayers about absolutely anything like please don't hesitate to reach out I would love to be in prayer for you um, I hope that you guys are having an awesome day or night wherever you may be and I will catch you in my next video see ya